Alright guys, so this is actually a very serious video. For some reason, God has been really bringing this to my attention. So I happen to stumble upon Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading off the Amplified Version. It says, to the dead church. So, to the dead church, says here verse 1. To the angel, divine messenger of the church in Sardis, write, these are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, reputation, that you are alive, but in reality, you are dead. Wake up and strengthen and reaffirm what remains of your faithful commitment to me, which is about to die. For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements. So remember and take to heart the lessons you have received and heard. Keep and obey them and repent. And in, and in parentheses, this is why I like the Amplified Version. It explains a lot more. So in parentheses, it says here, change your sinful way of thinking and demonstrate your repentance with new behavior that proves a conscious decision to turn away from sin. And then back to the red letters, which means that Jesus is talking. So the same verse, verse 3. So then, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you still have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes, that is, contaminated their character and personal integrity with sin, and they will walk with me dressed in white, because they are worthy, right? He who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God will accordingly be dressed in white clothing, and I will never blot out his name from the book of life. And I will confess and openly acknowledge his name before my Father and before his angels, saying that he is one of mine. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear and heed what the Spirit is saying to the churches. I want you to notice this key word. And the key word is in both verse 2 and in verse 3, and I'm reading off the Amplified Version, but this version spe is speaking to me right now as I'm talking to you. The words that I want you to take into consideration are, wake up. There are many people that are spiritually asleep, not physically asleep, spiritually asleep. God might even show you in some way, shape, or form that somebody is spiritually asleep. This is who Jesus is talking to. Wake up from your spiritual slumber. You are not lukewarm. You are not in compromise. You are not corrupt. If you are spiritually asleep, you are dead spiritually. And this should be a wake-up call. Wake up. If Jesus comes back, you will stay behind. If you are spiritually asleep and you do not wake up spiritually, you will remain here. So then if you do not wake up, again, verse 3. So then if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Meaning his people will be taken up into heaven. And because you were still spiritually asleep, you will stay. Accompany me to Matthew chapter 25. And this is the parable of the ten foolish virgins. Verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. Who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. Shomakaya. And five were wise, far-sighted, practical, and sensible. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delayed, they all began to nod off, and they fell asleep, spiritually asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and put their lamps in order, trimmed the wicks and added oil and lit them, the wise ones. But the foolish virgins said to the wise, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, otherwise there will not be enough for us and for you. So go instead to the dealers and buy oil for yourself. While, but while they were going away to buy oil, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut and locked. Later the others also came and said, Lord, Lord, 
open the door for us. But he replied, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I do not know you. We have no relationship, says here in parentheses in the Amplified Version. Therefore, verse 13, be on alert, be prepared and ready, for you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. Shomaka. Notice this key word, asleep. What did we just read in Revelation chapter 3? Wake up from your spiritual slumber. Matthew 25, those that fall asleep. The, the foolish virgins are the ones that fall asleep. The foolish virgins are this, thoughtless, silly, and careless. They don't care. They say, you really think Jesus is going to come back tomorrow? I don't think so. I'm going to keep living life how I am. That's just one of the characteristics of a foolish virgin. They're thoughtless, silly, and they're very careless about their own spiritual life, which is how you know that somebody's spiritually asleep. That is how you would know you are spiritually asleep. You have this characteristic. You're thoughtless, you're silly, and you're careless about your spiritual health. The five wise virgins are far-sighted. They think ahead. They think ahead of, the, of themselves spiritually. They see ahead spiritually. They are practical, spiritually practical. They maintain their relationship with Jesus. They pray, they fast, and they walk in the fear of God. They walk in the Spirit. And they are sensible. Now the oil is, the, is representing the Holy Spirit. Even if you're under somebody that is filled with the Holy Spirit, a pastor, it does not guarantee your salvation. That is what these foolish virgins were trying to do. Give me some of your oil, wise virgin. For I was a foolish virgin and I did not get any oil from myself. I don't have the anointing of the Holy Spirit in me. So can you give me some of your anointing from the Holy Spirit? And there's no way that, that somebody can save you. Only Jesus can save you. But like it says in Revelation 3, you have to repent and wake up spiritually. You have to repent and turn to God. Repent from your spiritual slumber. Repent from your spiritual sleep. The time is near. The time, we're running out of time. There are signs everywhere. Amazon One already released the chip in the hand. That it has a unique numerical identity. What does that sound like? Time is running out. If you are spiritually asleep, the Bible says you will not go to heaven. Jesus will not pick you up when he picks up all his believers, if you are spiritually asleep, if you are thoughtless, silly, and careless about your spiritual life, you will not make it. That is a guarantee that the Bible is talking about. Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. And I'm repeating this again like a broken record because it is essential for you to realize if you are in that state of mind, if you are in that state spiritually, if you are asleep spiritually, if God is showing you somebody that is asleep spiritually, this message is for you. Because once Jesus comes back, and you are in this state of foolishness. And, and if you are spiritually asleep, you will not make it. You have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Spiritual slumber, spiritual sleep is not corruption. It is not lukewarmness. It is spiritual death. Take note of your situation if you are in this state. Wake up. Was your name blotted out of the book of life because of your carelessness of your own spirituality? No one can snatch you out of the hand of Jesus, but you can fall away into apostasy. You can still repent and turn to Jesus. That is a good thing. If you're still breathing, you have an opportunity. Tonight is not guaranteed. The next five minutes are not guaranteed for you. If you are spiritually asleep and the next five minutes, Jesus decides to come back. Or, God forbid, God decides to take your life. If you remain in a spiritual sleep state, you will not make it, says the word of God, not me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write to you. For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin. And there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters. And you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. 
Now he's talking to the people that are awake spiritually. He's saying, the ones that are asleep spiritually, they don't know. They're not ready. But you, who have the Holy Spirit, that walk in the Spirit, that take care of yourself spiritually, that seek after the Lord every day, you aren't in the dark about these things, your brothers and sisters. And you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night. So be on your guard, not asleep like the others. So he's talking about the people that are awake. They have no need to worry because if they are awake spiritually, they'll be ready for the return of the Lord. But those that are asleep, verse 6, not asleep like the others, stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is a time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out His anger on us. Christ died for us, so that whether we are dead or alive physically, when He returns, we can live with Him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. So God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to pay that for, for that price that you owe, that debt that you owe. Verse 9, for God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out His anger against us. Not to pour out His anger against us. He gave us an opportunity. And those that are spiritually asleep are treating the blood of Jesus like it's nothing. Like it's Kool-Aid. You gotta wake up spiritually. If you don't wake up spiritually, if you're still in the state of worse than lukewarmness, if you are spiritually asleep, the Word of God says again, he will come like a thief in the night and you will not know, meaning you will stay in the rapture. You will not make it. And there will be judgment of God. That is what the Word of God says. So get right with God. Repent right now. You can still repent. If you are spiritually asleep, repent from your spiritual slumber. Repent and get right with God right now. Reconcile. We are here to reconcile you back to God. So right now is your opportunity. You're watching behind the camera, wherever you're watching from. Today is the day of salvation. Right now is the time of salvation. Get right with God. Tell your family. Tell your friends. If not, if they are spiritually asleep, if they are careless, they are foolish about life and, and they don't care about the things of God, they will not make heaven. And that's what the Word of God says. They will not make heaven. And even if you, you have a reputation for being spiritually alive, for being a Christian, if you go to church, but you're not spiritually alive, if you just go just to go, you go through the motions, but spiritually you are asleep, you will not make it. It's a strong message, but that is the word of God. You want references? Revelation chapter 3, Matthew chapter 25, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Read it on your own. Tell me what you think. Comment down below where you're watching from. Share this video with somebody that needs to hear there, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video, and I'll see you all next time, God willing.